Hey, I'm Joe West. I'm one of the hosts of the From the West Barn podcast, and today I'm going to show you my studio. I live in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, we moved here and built our house, and then built the studio here on this property. We have a 12-acre parcel of land, and um, I live up here and work down at my barn, which is a timber frame barn that houses my studio. Uh, and this is the walk I take every day to get there. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we are. This is my barn. It's called the West Barn Studios. It is a timber frame barn that is uh, 10 years old. It's 40 by 60 foot, 60 foot with 29 foot ceilings, all Carolina yellow pine that's been unsealed. So it feels just like the inside of a guitar chamber. Kept an open flow control room. So it's like, um, uh, I had worked with Dan Lanwall and Malcolm Byrne on an Emmylou Harris record. Really enjoyed the open control room, meaning you work where people record. We have the ISO booths for isolation, and these are fully floated and separated rooms within rooms. The interior ceiling hangs off a of spring, so no part of the building touches the other without load uh, diminishing qu qualities like the springs. And um, I've had many studios over the years from bedroom studios with just a set of headphones and one microphone through one little mic pre, uh, and eventually has grown into this, which is a full large format recording room, where we track, you know, regularly six, seven, eight, nine, upwards to 10 people at a time uh, in this environment. And we make records that, that I love making and enjoy the sounds of. It's a beautiful sounding room. Uh, come on with me, I'm gonna take you around. Got a whole poured concrete foundation uh, with floated floors in each ISO booth. We got this wood inlay, which uh, I just wanted as much wood as possible rather than having the concrete be really reverberant and echoey. I wanted to make sure that we had um, as many warm tones in here as possible. So if you look at the floor, you could see that it's all just straight uh, pine, untreated pine. So. It gets all scratched up and people spill wine on it if we're having wine and, and I thank them for that because the more beat up the better. You'll notice the walls have what look like old barn wood. There was an old barn that sat on the site. This is a 120 year old tobacco plantation, this whole valley. Uh, I own 12 of those acres. They're the main multi-purpose barn sat on this site. That is all the wood from it. So all the wood that you see on the walls and on the ISO booths. You see the cabinets in the kitchen. All that stuff was from the old barn. So all that wood is the old walnut and hickory that was on site. And like I said, the timber frame aspect, the new aspect, if you pan up in here to the ceiling, you'll see all this pine. It's just Carolina yellow pine, a very soft pine um, and untreated. So there's no shellac on it or finishing. So it feels exactly like a very warm return with audio, which we love. So, we've built the two ISO booths here, left and right. They are mirrored, uh, exactly the same. We've got seven tons of HVAC in here, which is a lot. There's a ton in each ISO booth, so we can heat and cool those incredibly well. Um, and you can go in there and play drums and be recording an acoustic guitar out here, which is really great. We do that all the time. These big 10-foot service doors are all around. We've got three of them. The third one is um, an old garage door with, um, I saw it at a restaurant, so we put a garage door here. I wanted as much light as possible. You can see we got some lights coming through the gables or through these uh, little porticos here. What do you call them? Uh, dormers. And we've got the four little square lights that you see that bring in light from the outside world. So a lot of nice light. It's all tungsten lit, so like all these old timey tungsten bulbs, which add a really nice warm look to the whole place. It was really difficult. You could see these big lines here, these rope lights that we have going along. If you, you get them, Eli? Yep. These go the whole distance and have all halogen light. So it's always very nice and warm here. A really nice environment. You're never further than a couple of feet from somebody making the record, so that's nice. It's not, not like you have to rely on talkbacks and video cameras with people stowed away in rooms. Got a fully functioning kitchen. 
And this is a private studio. It does get used, you know, in the outside world, you know, zero degrees or one degree of separation, friends will come in and make records. Primarily used to suit all my cre creative endeavors, which are, is songwriting, record producing, mixing. I do a lot of film, uh, so we shoot a lot of film stuff. We just shot a Hardy episode here live for Sirius XM. We just shot Carly Pierce, another Sirius XM with Stormy Warren here last week. We just did Brett Young in here, a video shoot. Uh, the Joey and Rory DVD that is gold, has gone gold, was shot in this room. Um, and we shoot just a ton of stuff here. So it, it really is a great space. I'm very grateful to have it uh, to be able to shoot stuff that it's like whatever creatively you want to do. This is a great place to be doing it. You look up here, we've got a lighting grid, some of the lights up in the ceiling. These three spots here, intimidator spots, which throw gobos and really nice looking slick spotlight stuff. Really, uh, a really functional room. We can go from looking one way to a, looking a completely different other way. We've done product stuff in here for Sabian. We've done stuff in here. I just shot a radial uh, Pro DI, their new PZ Pro uh, in here. Each one of the spaces has all these. Let me know if you can see this, Eli. Get it. You can get in here and get a shot at it. These are our panels. You see, it actually says gasoline studios at one time. I called it gasoline. It was my production company. You can see what is that 12 inputs there plus a bunch of um, ethernet for the headphone systems the avium headphone systems we use all the spaces we have 48 total inputs 48 we have 48 total wall panels going around the room this room has a wall panel they all go through the conduit when we poured the concrete in here we ran all those lines so if you come over here there's maxine if you look down here by this, you'll see them coming up through the floor. So they all come up through the conduit and the concrete and all get wired into my patch bay. Move my COVID mask. This is my patch bay. You can see all 48 lines coming in from the walls or on the top. Couldn't get a close up of that. All 48 of those lines are just around the room. If you go to a, to a panel in my room and you, you see a 37 on it, that's the only place it shows up. All my mic inputs come in here from the walls. All my mic pre's are down here on the next row. Everything flows outputs into inputs. So it's just a natural flow. If you come into my room, it would be like you could work at any pro studio. This is sort of how we lay them out. So all the mic inputs around the room, all my mic pre's. You can see here I have 22 APIs. There's a, um, two golden age pre's that I don't use that much. And there's one, this SH stands for Shadow Hills. I got a Shadow Hills over here. So let's take a look. Here's the mic pre's. This is still set up from this Carly Pierce recording we did. But here's 16 of the mic pre's, API 3112s, 3124s, I'm sorry, four 312s in a rack. Then we got a 500 series rack. Here with another five APIs in the Shadow Hills. I do have one of these left. This is one of those uh, three o'clock in the morning searching around the internet purchases that I never really use, but it's there. Uh, on the mic pre size, we also have these two presonuses, which are really good. We use them for click tracks and talkbacks and whatnot. So we've got a total, I think, of 40 inputs in this room with mic pre's attached. And then if we want to go to a wall joint or a wall panel that's set up to say, go to one of these, we could just patch it over to an API. So we do that quite a bit. Um, I've got the Mackies. These are the, oh, the oldest piece of gear that I have, the longest I've owned anything are these two Mackies. I bought them when I was in New York City. You can see there's some, a little bit of cobwebs on them for that spooky October sound. These are the original Mackies. They're fantastic. Um, I've bought multiple sets of these after the fact trying to get them from my B-Rig and haven't been able to get them to buy any that sound the same as these. They have the original drivers that are in the tweeters for these are, they were the same sourcing company that, that Genelec used for the 1031As. So they sounded, that's what I was on, Genelec 1031As. I moved to these in 1998 and I have not gone um, away from them. They're the only monitors I, I use to mix on. I know them really well and um, they've worked. It's, what is that, 1998? So they're 22 years old. It's the oldest piece of gear that's been in my system for the longest. You can see here we've got a massive 50 inch screen. I'm going to call up a Pro Tools session here. A massive 50 inch screen that we use just because we can, I guess. 
Um, this is where all, it's a hybrid system, all this analog gear goes in and it is uh, controlled. My DAW is Pro Tools. That's the only one I use. Um, there's plenty of great ones out there, but that's the one that I use. Uh, let's call it the Zach Emery thing. We tracked this last Monday here. Uh, we'll call it this guy. And then we'll show you a little bit around a session. But um, we'll look through my racks now. So if we go back to my patch bay, all of my outputs from my wall panels are here. All my mic pre inputs are here. You can see all my APIs, then some those three oddball pre's. And then I've got my first rack of pre I've got another rack of pre here. It was labeled as a different headphone amp that we've since removed. Um, underneath that, you look here, all AP mic pre's out. So I can go out and send to compressors. You know, my compressors live over here, out over in. So if I want to go out, I usually patch out at that point. And then underneath the API, uh, mic pre's out, are my interfaces in. So it's wall panel to mic pre, mic panel or mic pre out to interface in. So you can see I have my Apogee Symphony here, 16 analog ins, and my Digi192 is there. And then those all flow out, and you would think they would go into my sub, my Dangerous 2 bus here, my summing amp. Look over here, Eli. But they don't. In my studio, I send them all to my, they're all normal to go to my headphone amp. So we have a pre, an Avion 16-channel uh, mixer setup where everybody gets their own personalized mix. They all go right to there. So all the Apogee Symphony stuff goes directly into the headphone system. All of my Digi192, the eight outputs from that, go directly into my dangerous monitor, which sits here. It's super cruddy. I'm embarrassed. Look at this. How could I? So I've got only one set of monitors, so it stays on the main, but here is Digi 1, 2, Digi 3, 4, Digi 5, 6, Digi 7, 8. So I can have my main mix here and then have the rough mix from the, the demo of the song or have another reference of a song I want it to sound like on here and I can switch between them without having to worry about uh, feeding a compressor on a two bus, you know, so I can discreetly listen and hear everything. Um, that pretty much shows you the patch bay. Let's show you some of the compressors that I have. I'm a compressor freak. I love them. Um, I've got a set of Neve 32 264As. These came out of the 8058s and 8068s. These are amazing. I wanted them my whole life. Finally got them at a good price. These are, I just saw these on a listing for $14,000 for the pair. I paid $4,500 for them. Uh, but they are nothing like them. They're beautiful. Below that, I have the Allen Smart. I think it's an Allen Smart. The C1. I like the C1 better than the C2. This is essentially a SSL uh, center section compressor. He's the guy that designed it for SSL. This is his version. But rather than just having one stereo compressor, it allows you to then say, hey, have them two separate mono compressors. So identical to the SSL. Fantastic. It gives you that pop sound that was so famous in the 90s. Go over here to this rack. You'll see I have my Dangerous 2 bus for summing amps. Um, I don't use that a ton as a summing amp, but I do use it in my two mixes quite a bit to hit really hard and crush. We've got all of our APIs that continue on over to here to the 500 rack. Um, all the mic priests. Then we have these, which are um, sometimes I'll hit my APIs really hard and then use this, which is a uh, the resistors. You know, these are pads. So this is passive. No power goes to this, and I can knock down the signal so that I don't distort my interface and I can crank my drums so that they get really fat and gainy if I want that in a sound. Very cool. These guys, I don't know if they're still in business. Gas 810. Matched resistors so that you can do stereo pairs. Love that. And then over to this rack here. This is the rack mount for the, uh, the Dangerous 2 bus, which is our monitor, which was over here. This is the Aviom system. This just separates everything out to those headphones. You can see there's 1 through 16. This is the controller that allows us to decide whether there's stereo or mono on these Avion boxes, which are killer. Uh, it used to be that whenever I was making tracking dates, uh, I spent half my time making the band, you know, doing little nuanced uh, mix revisions to their separate headphone, me separate headphone feeds. This takes care of all that. They have it on their own. I've had Avion for 10 years, and it's like I never have anybody bothering me with headphone requests during the session. They're great, they sound great, they're easy to use. Below it are those two racks of mic pre's for the ancillary stuff. I'm also shooting a video right now with sonar drums where we're gonna be doing 
uh, a really aff do the cheapest drum sound. We bought a pack of mics that cost like 199 bucks for, off of like the deal of the day. We're gonna mic up the drum kit with that and then we're gonna have, we're gonna record them and add up the amount and get like the $386 or the $512 drum sound. Then we're gonna do a version where we do it through all world-class microphones and mic pre's and see if we can hear a difference. This is my Racked Mac Mini. It lives over here. There's my Pro Tools authorizer. This is my PCIe uh, expansion chassis where my HDX cards live for Pro Tools. And then I have my Apogee Symphony, it's, uh, Apogee Symp Symphony. there's the word. Um, great box, I love it. 16 analog ins, 16 um, digital ins and outs. Uh, analog and digital in, 32 ins and outs on this. Down below it, I have a Digi 192, and that's what shows up as used mostly for monitoring. Um, so above here you can see some, I know this is some mess, right? I mean, who doesn't clean their studio whenever they're doing a tour of it, but I didn't. There's some coffee from something on top of a hard drive that has stuff that's not backed up on it. I do not recommend that. Pencil sharpener, you need it. People write charts. This is the DMX control for our lighting system. We have wireless lights in here. So this is a, my good friend Earl bought me this as a birthday gift and it's a glyph, you know, super fast drive. And then we've got, this is another world's computing, I think it's a four or eight gig drive. We've got 30 gigs of drives around here. This is all it's up right now. This is just a little travel drive, which is actually excellent because you could put SD cards in it when you're traveling if you're a photographer or a videographer and you don't even have to, it's battery operated, creates its own network, you can watch movies on the plane and I can just pump in an SD card and it will just transfer it, not even connected to a computer. It'll transfer it and back up my cameras on traveling. It's fantastic. That's that rack. You can see here I've got a little heater, a bunch of wires, gobbly goo. That's my Aviom uh, network switch there for all my headphones. Over here, we've got a Manly variable MU. We did an episode with uh, Ivana Manly. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces of gear. I also have the Pultec EQ, which is stellar. Um, both of these, they just sound amazing. I can't get rid of them because they just sound too good. This is a clone of a 33609, which essentially is the same exact cards, compressor cards that live in these 32264As. They went into a rack mount version. The 33609 no revision, the 33609A and B are both based off of a 32264, a 2264 circuit. That's what's in here. He was the only guy, Derek Stoddard, uh, had this company. He was the only guy that got licensed by Neve to do a clone. This is it. It's fantastic. Um, once again, we showed you our Pultec here, which is nice. It's the one that has just all the nice bright frequencies and sub frequencies, so you can low end and high end, essentially, this is. It's a great sounding 2BQ. Below it, we have an Orban 424. This is a broadcast limiter. I'm a fan of broadcast limiters because they have such a sound. You put a mix through this and it will, you can get a really unique sound. And that's what I'm using all these compressors for is to get really unique sounds. Below it, I have a um, RCA. This is a BA, this is a line amp. This used to be in a AM radio station. So this would be their line amp, FET limiter, uh, a FET limiter, I think, let me look here. There's a op photo opto compressor and a FET limiter. Photo opto compressor, FET limiter. This would have been the uh, outgoing chain to a transmitter. And it's incredible. It's all solid state, but you put some, a bass through this and kill it, and you bring it up on a fader, and you'll be like, I've been looking for that sound my whole life. Underneath, you see I have a couple of lapel mics, wireless units for video shoots. Below that, I bought this for the Jimmy Wayne record, and we did a song with it. With, it's a really crappy mic pre, but it made the drums sound like old Beatles, an old Beatles record. I don't know if the song actually got released, but it was incredible. Got this rack for... 88 bucks shipped to me. And um, it was so flawed that it was such a cool sound. Uh, and we used it for that. This is a bunch of camera gear from this radial shoot we just did. I'm gonna push it out of the way without trying to shear off any knobs. These are more radio limiters. Oh. Up at the top, we have these Automaxes, CBS Automaxes, radio broadcast limiters. These are meant to drive level. You drive it in and it would maintain your program within a certain scope. So really unique sounding compressors. These were thousands of dollars back in the day. I bought all four for like, I wanna say 400 bucks. I don't use them that much because I need to take a little time and get, um, get them wired a little better. Below that, we have two Optimods, Orban Optimods. These are TV, Optimod TV, you see. This is a broadcast limiter. 
You get in here, they got this little nerdy tweaker for you to do nerdy tweaky things with. All your settings are back here so nobody messes with it. And this would have been what they used as a final broadcast limiter to go out to the tower for a TV signal. If you put a mix through this thing and hit it hard, it sounds like it's an old FM radio, which is like, if you know about old broadcast limiters, that is a magical sound. The lo-fi record was printed through this to a tape machine, which was pretty stellar. This is a mono version. It doesn't get used as much. Up here, we have a little Behringer that we've been using for some talk back. During the sessions, the guys all have uh, their own headphone mixes, but they also have their own little talkback system, like push to talk. They have a foot pedal, and when they push it down, it's like a CB. They can talk to each other. You can see here, we got Nier, Z, Mark Hill, Jeff Roach, Mike Payne, uh, Jason Roller, who we didn't need to use because he had his own mics in there on the acoustic. This is me, the producer, and this is Ron, the engineer. This is our levels for talking to one another in between takes and during takes. So super stellar. That is, and this is my guitar rig that's in totally disheveled right now. I always like watching these videos where guys have their shit so together that uh, I don't. So some camera gear there. Um, and this is a Pro Tools session here we've got up. I'll play you a little bit. This We tracked this last week. It's an artist from Texas. And this is like right after the tracking date. You can see, let me get my little beach ball out of the way. Um, this was right after the track. So this is what it sounds like literally right after we tracked it with me maybe sitting down and clearing out some tracks. Um, I will record it so that we can include the direct audio in the final little video here. I'm going to create a new track in Pro Tools. Stereo audio track. I'm going to send my master to it. I'm going to send it out bus. Let's see what's available. 19 and 20. I'm going to tell this new track that I just created to look at bus 19 and 20. I'm going to send this out to Digi12. We're going to listen to Digi12 on our little monitor here. I'm going to put on input. I'm going to record. So this is a thing that is, uh, I'll leave the scratch vocal off. I have the fiddle turned off right now because I probably haven't even looked at it. So this is what it sounds like. Uh, literally, guys leave the session. This is what's up on the console. You can see what do we have here. We've got drum click track up on top, a kick. Low freak, which is a sub frequency thing, like a you know, a kicker. Uh, snare, I have a snare triggered on this, snare delay on this song, snare reverb, hi hat, overhead left, overhead right, shoulder mic, tom one, tom two, tom, th tom three. And we've got uh, room with the earthworks. Drums are in the small ISO, but then I put the, the drum mics out in the big room and leave the door open. And then a 57 out in that room, too. Got a bass DI here. And then a Royer 122 on Mike Payne's electric, uh, an overdub, uh, overdub electric, um, B3, piano, acoustic guitar, high strung, which is the high strings from an acoustic guitar, uh, and the regular acoustic, so the regular low strung acoustic. And then we've got a banjo and a fiddle. The fiddle is not going to be on right now. Let's take a listen. That's pretty cool. I love um, it sounds that good right after the tracking date. A lot of my mixing starts right after the tracking date. I'll start getting into it and getting it sound, sounding good. So by the time I start to mix it, it's probably 
80% of the way there. Um, and I'll let you hear a couple of things. I'll show you that room mic. You can hear that delay there. It's really cool in the verses. You can hear da 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 but Let's listen to this drum kit real quick. I'm going to just solo the drums. I want to just show you the room mic. These are the room mics that live out. I'll turn them all the way down and then I'll bring them up so you can hear how cool the diversity that you can get in a drum kit that's like totally dry room to bigger Led Zeppelin y sound. Totally dry. It's, it's really great. You can just get anything you want out of that drum kit. Great organic all inside the drum sound. It's not like there's a bunch of stuff. And I'm not, the sample that I'm triggering, let me turn it off. Just so you can hear what it sounds like. So it still sounds great. I just have a little bit of slap, a little bit of high end on it. And um, let's see if there's anything. Oh, I want to show you this acoustic guitar. This is a nice little trick. I've got the acoustic guitar kind of panned left, and I've got the high six, which is all the high strings from a 12 string pack. It's all panned right right now, but it's just such a cool sound. Let's check it out. So I just like it because it's essentially a 12 string guitar pan, you know, high over here, low over here. Cool little trick. That's really it. You can see my two bus here. I've got some stuff on it, all staple stuff that stays on most of the stuff I do. That's my studio. We want you to send us clips of your studio. Show us if it's just a laptop and a mic pre, if it's just a laptop and a USB mic. We want to see what y'all are making records on and we're going to post them on our YouTube channel. Look in the description for the detail of where to send that. If you have a question, you can email me, gasolineinc at gmail.com. Inc like incorporated, I-N-C. Gasolineinc at gmail.com. And we'll make sure you can get your video to us. We're going to share it on our YouTube channel, and we'll probably feature some of those. This is Miss Maxine. So from Miss Maxine and me, thank you for checking out my studio. We'll see you. Check out from the West Barn Podcast.